last meeting to order. This is the meeting of the RMLD um, Light Department Board of Commissioners. It's being videotaped at the RMLD offices at 230 Ash Street in Reading. This meeting is being videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. I read our code of conduct. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and the parties, including <coughs> members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or respond to comments. What's recognized by the chair, all persons speaking, all addressing the board shall state their names and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. So with that, we move to um, introductions. We have our CAB member here. Hello. So, welcome, Dennis. Welcome, Dennis. Welcome, Dennis. Nice to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, OK. You got any comments? Or? OK. OK, good, good. <laughs> We've got public comment from our public. And then we move to the uh, reorganization of the Board of Commissioners. So our first up should be the officers. So uh, at this point, I will open the floor. For, I, well, actually, I'll make a couple comments first. I should make a couple comments. Sure, thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, the past year has been a uh, very interesting year, <coughs> at times very stressful. Kind of stressful when you see yourself vilified in front of the, on the TV, but, you know, live. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's been a stressful, but I think we, we've come out the other side now at this point. So um, I think we, we did all right. So anyway, and with that, I will... I'd like to make an addition to that. Sure. Uh, I'd just like to say, Mr. Chairman, I think you did a yeoman job this year in mm -hmm. terms of uh, handling the, uh, all the affairs of the RMLD and certainly with the town as well, and I, yeah. I applaud you for that. Yes, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. I would echo that. I'd also say, uh, you know, I think what... For the purposes of the audience uh, that may not fully comprehend what we mean by stress, I think the challenges uh, were all town members and most of us town meeting members, so we understand, empathize, and, and are mm -hmm. very connected to the town, but we also serve as commissioners, which means our priority is uh, uh, to do what is uh, responsible and appropriate for the RMLD, which also does impact the town, but sometimes they're not completely overlapping, and therein lies some of the stress and the discussions and trying to satisfy both uh, responsibilities. But I would agree with John. I think you've done a great job, Phil, Thank in you. part Thank you know, you. of your experience of mm -hmm. both in town and also on the board, so we, okay. we appreciate that. Very good. Thank you. I offer that as well, Phil. Okay. Fantastic Thank you. Fantastic job. Okay. Very good. Okay. If uh, nominations are open. The nominations are now open. Uh, I would like to nominate Dave Hennessy for the role of chairman uh, mm -hmm. of the board for the RMLD. Is that seconded? I'll second that motion. All right. Any other nominations? If not, I will close. You've got the most votes uh, what? ever. In <laughs> 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 yes, just to vote. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, somebody move to close nominations, if you would, move please. To close. Move to close nominations. That's seconded. Second. All in favor of closing nominations, raise your right hand. Opposed, that motion carries. We're now voting for the Davis chairman. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? So you now get to step over here. You're <laughs> now in charge. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> chairman. You're now in charge. All right. Under the scary seat. <laughs> what, what exactly do I do, Phil? I you, uh, <laughs> you remember those days? <laughs> it was so long ago. It was. <laughs> All right. Oh, I like this chair. This is, pretty, chair. this is pretty good. Sir? I like this. This is a power seat. Yeah. This is really good. Me a cup. Oh, you need a cup. Oh, He's already giving me jobs. Right. Yes. Oh, oh, there we go. All right. Great. All right. So we got that done. So now we need to approve the board minutes. Uh, wait. I oh, wait. Move, wait. Move, oh. Move, move. Well, what else do we have to do? We got to do the rest of the order. Vice, vice chairman. Vice chair. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So do we have a... Um, yes, I would like to nominate... Okay. Uh, Dave Talbot for Vice Chairman. Okay. Do we have a... I will second, second that. Second All right. right. Okay. Discussion? Is that what I'm supposed to say? No. 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 Okay. Any, any other nominations? Any other nominations? Mm -hmm. All right. None heard. Close nominations. Close nominations. Motion. Mm -hmm. no motion. motion to close. Yes. No. Second. Mm -hmm. second. All second. right. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Close. No. Okay. To close. All right. All in favor, Dave. And all in favor for Dave to be Dave Talbot for Vice Chair? Yep. All right. 
Motion passed 5 0. Dave Talbot, Vice Chair. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now I think we can go to approving some minutes, right? Right, you got the committees now. Oh, the committees, okay. right. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, here it is right here. Dave, did you want to? Oh. I'd, um, on the audit committee, maybe we could start with the audit committee. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to move that we retain the two uh, individuals on the audit committee yeah. unless uh, other commissioners have other thoughts on it. Yeah. Because of uh, Phil's background, he's quite, he's a natural for that. He's been there before. He knows yeah. all the people. And I think it just makes uh, total sense to have him mm -hmm. as the chair. And that's the liaison to the town as well. So, right, right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, my only, uh, may I? Yeah. Chair? Yeah. So, I know there was some thoughts around uh, reorganizing the structure, but I, I guess I'm happy to stay on audit, although if we were going to retain the same slate of committees, I would probably be more interested in the, in the uh, GM uh, committee as, a, as opposed to the audit committee. Not that I don't like the audit committee, but having been off that for the year, but I don't know what other people's interest are, so why don't we... Uh, Maybe look at all the committees, yeah. uh, just look at the committee topic. I'd be happy First. to serve on the uh, audit committee, uh, mm -hmm. if you okay. wish. I mean... Yeah. Okay. Was... Okay. Yeah, and I'd be more than happy to step off the GM review committee. Okay. So, Tom wants to step on there. Okay. If I may. I yeah, do you want to... I would just suggest maybe we don't need a policy committee. Um, I know we had a lot of policy review and made a lot of good changes, and perhaps if there's any additional ones, we can just handle it at the full board meetings and we don't have to have separate meetings where all, f and all five of us end up attending most of the time anyway. Unless anybody disagrees, maybe we don't need a policy committee. Like or yeah. Yeah. So actually in thinking about the slate, I would say I would support that. I think the uh, – having been both on and off the policy committee, I think uh, the policies, although – in every company can be dry and you know a bit tedious uh, it's important that when we change them everyone understands it. and I think it's hard to get summary feedback from the committee to the larger board so I, I think it makes sense and it's logical that the policies get handled by the by the board so the audit and GM committees probably are, are ones where there's a rationale around doing it I think on the general manager committee I think there's activities that need to be done in terms of the normal you know benchmarking and because we want to make sure that the general managers you know uh, rewards and compensation are fair both in terms of what she does for RMLD but also relative to the market and so forth so I think retaining GM and audit makes sense I think the value there but I would agree with Dave that uh, the policy one unless others or, you know, yeah, if I can make a yeah, point uh, as well, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I'd like to hear from the general manager as well in terms of whether there is a uh, we, – we've been addressing policies for a long time now, and we've changed a number of them, and I think uh, uh, rightfully so. Um, and the question is whether uh, we can deal with remaining policies that need to be updated or changed uh, in an effective way sure. in terms of the full board. And maybe do one per session, or so that we aren't doing five uh, in one meeting, for example. Um, do you think that's uh, possible? Um, yeah, we can try doing it however you like. I mean, at, at one point we were doing one, and and then we wanted to do more. So because if everyone got together, um, but the policies, you know, got so far out of date that in order to bring them up, in order to meet all of the um, the laws and things like that, they, they got quite uh, um, comprehensive in the changes. So, um, I mean, I can send them out. There's no deliberation when I send them out, and I guess we'll just talk about them when we meet. But some of them, I mean, we're, we're only halfway done with them. There was over 30 of them. And, um, and, and they take a long time. Each one of them, right. you know, has a substantial amount of changes. So perhaps we could deal with them incrementally, meaning you know one per session or whatever. But uh, obviously, it has to go at the pace that you're comfortable with in terms of feeling that it's complete, and in terms of being able to bring it to the board 
for a recommendation to approve. Yep, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So I think there's two issues. One is whether we have a committee or not, or whether we just utilize the board. And then the second issue is when we convene. You know, do we do it embedded in the regular meeting? Yes. But I think the idea of having the full board do it uh, is beneficial. And then I think if we find this slippage. I think we always have the opportunity with noticing to say, okay, we have a board meeting in May or June. We're going to, because it would also be an open meeting, I presume, that we would, uh, we could still tag a half hour, you know, in front of the regular meeting devoted to, or an hour, whatever it is, to policies and still accomplish the same objective, right? So if we sure. can't tuck it inside the board meeting, We'd be able to, with noticing, put it in front or behind, far be in front, so in case we have executive well, session. These tend to be open meetings, though, right? So you'd have to. Mm. Um, well, we'd notice it. So instead of instead of a, a committee meeting on such and such a date before the regular board meeting, the regular <coughs> board would meet and it would be noticed that that, that time frame was to do to policies. incorporate the, yeah. the policy as yeah. well. Okay. So sure. that way, yeah. there we still get the economy of not a separate night meeting. And we don't have separate uh, committees having to serve it up to the board. I think that's a great suggestion. Yeah. What do you think about that, Phil? Sounds good to me. So no policy committee? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we still review policies. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just part of the regular session. If we need extra time, we'll add some time onto one or before it. Yep. All right. Good. Do we have to vote on that in any way? No. Nope. That's just all right. That's good. Vote to disband the. It is. Um, yeah, vote. We have, do we have to vote to disband the existing one or not? No. No, okay. No. Okay. We just don't appoint anybody to it. All right. <laughs> so that is gone. And the general manager meeting, you made the point that maybe that one makes sense to keep together. Does everybody mm -hmm. agree with that? Yeah. Uh, well, I think what we. The, the audit, like, definitely. We're def the audit, everybody agreed on that. Uh, well, go ahead. Um, okay. Right, and then we have John going to audit. Is that right? Yeah. Right. And and if you need a third on the general manager, I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. Okay. Do we if have, you need a third? Have do you need so a third? we have, why don't we repeat them once? I'll send out something. Yeah. Tomorrow. So we have, we have Phil. Yeah. Phil, Phil is chair on the audit committee and John joining him. And then I've got. Um, nope. Okay. And John. Uh, yeah. yeah. And John. Okay. Yeah. So I'm also on the town audit committee too. So not the when we right. meet in the town. And then there's a town committee with Phil and right. myself. Right. The town right. committee itself. So. Okay. Yeah. I send out. Okay. But that's not related to RMLD town committee. Well, it I kind of I represent the RMLD's interest at that. Okay. In the overall, because part of the audit does include the enterprise funds. Okay. Which which we're considered as. All right. So do you have four general managers at the moment? That's too many. That's too many. Yeah. Because then we might, we might, if that's the case, then we might as well just make it. Yeah. Is it possible? What do you guys think? Can we make the GM part of the? Just make it part of like what we're going to do for the policy committee. Uh, I, I'd be happy to do that as well. I mean, uh, quite, quite frankly, I think we've refined it over the last couple of years yeah. so the questions Everybody's are there, there the waitings yeah. are there and so mm -hmm. I think anything we would change would be incremental quite mm -hmm. frankly so I think I that works Mr. Chair. yeah so uh, I agree with that I think the only it's probably stating the obvious but I I think it just uh, then falls on the the chair vice chair to to make sure in advance because I think there is some things that need to get done in advance with respect to the you know the performance review review of the form and so that'll happen I think anyway, right way but just uh, yeah I, so it doesn't because that, that's not a group activity right four people won't pull that together yeah, if I could comment on that as well I, I agree and uh, we tend to be very delayed over the years in yep. doing that I'd like to see perhaps this year we try to do it on time um, would be a really good thing mm. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, instead of right. three or four months late right, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so maybe when are we supposed to have that done well, to the, 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 it's an interesting question uh, because with the calendar change, 
I assume that the performance right. review uh, cycle will change, which is okay because you don't have that experience with that. You just uh, accommodate it, you know, with a different time frame on a one-off basis. So, if we didn't move the calendar change, the uh, performance review and, and, and any approved uh, compensation change is effective July one, right? So you'd probably want to have the uh, performance review. I mean, I guess we'd say we would want to do it. Uh, is July one the right? Is that's July one's the effective increase date, right? Coming. So, I mean, in a lot of companies, what you'd do, you'd have a different effective date because your performance year closes and then you do the review of you know a month or two at max but given how we do it i would say if we didn't change the calendar you would want to do the uh performance review in in the june t you know june july time frame so that seems reasonable then yeah. if we had to do an interim one to catch up to the calendar year yeah we could do that yeah. as well. Right. So I, I would say realistically, because uh, we have been late, I think if we were, <coughs> I mean, you, you'd want to get through the performance period to because you wouldn't, it's hard to make a decision when, when the, for the general manager when the year's still going on, right? Well, y yes, I'm but confused. You, sorry? Okay. I'm confused. Well, well, right we don't want to wait. Right now, we're, we're, right now wait I'm doing, um, it's July to July. Yes, right. July to July. And if we switch the, the, um, the budget to a calendar year, you change the performance review. Would you need to? Yeah, it's because well, I mean, well, I, I would postulate you do. That's a good question. You could still, you, 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 you know, it, right. your uh, your your count, your budget is still being done in in a, in a okay. year. You all of your goals are still being done in a year. Yeah, but the idea is to you, you have a your financials are pegged to a year, so I, I think it would be unusual. Most companies today are going with a we just got something a. To and the annual uh, focal review, which is a focal ca you. calendar review, but I, okay. I, I think you'd want to. I, I don't know exactly how much of a difference it would make, but if you got your review done in July, uh, you'd be getting reviewed from July to July. But your performance period, which is a calendar year, because you, your performance period is now a calendar year, January to December, right? You're measuring your revenue and your everything. When do you have a? Uh, Can you try to yeah. yeah. So we're in FY18. We're yeah. the budget. She had to come up. She had to come up because my. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you come up so the <coughs> cable the TV people at home can hear? Our multitude of fans. Right. <laughs> both both of our viewers <laughs> can hear you. Yes, please. Okay. Um, and, and I'm not saying I'm 100% sure on this, mm -hmm. but um, so we're right now presenting the budget for FY19. So there is, in fact, a fiscal year 19. But there's only going to be, based on your um, vote, a six-month fiscal year 19. Mm. So we cannot consider ourselves calendar year until the end of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. So as Tom is stating, it w there would be a performance review for July 1 for this past fiscal year right. of mm -hmm. FY18. Yeah. And then <coughs> possibly January 1 would be months. just the six-month mm. for July through December. And then we'd be on another 12-month right. review process. So right. I think that what Colleen that is raising sense? is whether... Yes, thank you, Wendy. Yeah, but I think <laughs> you are... not right? I thought I heard you say, Colleen, you were raising the question, would you even have to change the review period from July? And I think the answer is yes, because your measuring period in your budget is, is all tied, that will be tied to a calendar yes. year. What I was trying to clarify was the year. It was still fiscal year until... 1-1 one, one of 19. Right. We're still going to be six months of a fiscal yeah. year because then we have to present a different budget yeah. at the end of September. Yeah. Okay. So you got to do a lot more work this year Thank because of the new much. vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, double, year. double the work. Yes, like. double the All work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, let me try to summarize. I think what I'd suggest subject to others' input is you would have July uh, review done sometime in July, the one that's a to, to cover the fiscal year yes. uh, 18. That review would yes. happen hopefully in July, effective July 1. It would be another review early 2019 for those six months, so you don't have to go a year and a half for review. And then subsequent, each future year, the review would get done in January, February. Right so after the year closes. Close the right. year. So your performance and your compensation is tied to the fiscal year. Yes. 
so I will work on revising my contract and mm -hmm. getting all that done. <laughs> well, I mean, there's another. I don't. Does anyone disagree with that? No, no it sounds, I think it sounds right. Fine. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. yeah if you change the process for Colleen, does that mean everyone that's up for a raise in the next fiscal year gets another review in January too? So now every employee gets re-reviewed in January. What, what would you do, Colleen? Or oh, okay. Okay. So all five of you would have double reviews in a eight, 18 month period. Yeah, but it'd be uh, it's a prorated, so you get reviewed for six months. But so if you if your increase was four percent for a six month review, it'd be prorated. So if that was four percent, you'd get two percent, right? Because otherwise it, you'd be increasing there. Yeah. And that's how it's normally done. But I'm sure Wendy will look at it. <laughs> how? But are the other workers that are they? Uh, they're on a, a focal review too, right? They get reviewed what uh, at the same time each year, or it's, it's all most everyone's there's a union review period, right? Um, calendar year. Yeah. Yeah, but it, year increases. Yeah, but it's the same time for everybody. Outside of the senior management. Yeah, and what time is what time of the year is it? January first. Automatically, the calendar. Um, the the labor contract kicks in. Oh, okay. Any time so it actually matches better now. It's good. Yeah, great. I, I think he was talking about the employee review, not the union contract wage increase. Well, yeah, I guess, oh, those are separate, I guess, right? Those are separate. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily coordinate with a monetary increase. Um, they, you know, only five people are in, are outside of the union. And so I leave it to each senior manager as to when they want to do their annual reviews of their employees within the IBEW. Okay. Um, as, it, as it currently stands, though, the, the, the uh, most of the employees get reviewed uh, at what time of year? Is it the beginning of the year? Or is it there? You know, we have some jobs in IBEW that are on a progression path, and, and they may be um, eligible to uh, step up to the next progression level. Uh, in a year, some of them are in two years, so they might have a mid one year review process. Um, it, it depends on the career development of, of each job description within IBEW. The AFSME unit doesn't usually have a, um, an evaluation unless they have a, a promotion or they're applying for a job. Okay, so um, just on the committees, we have one left, right? That's what we're saying? Audit. Yep. Right. Phil and John. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's simple. Yep. Good. Ba so, back to uh, oh, yep. now that we understand what's happening, uh, I think because of what we're doing at the fiscal year, it's even more important that we have a timely review of the general manager. So, what July, I was, we're what saying. I was going to suggest is maybe. Um, Tracy could put something in the calendar, so we should s probably start looking in June as to what needs to happen. You know, That's a good idea. You know, in terms of getting things ready. Yeah. You know, prepped and because Colleen does a self-assessment, so because if we don't want that to go too long, because we'll start to butt up against <laughs> the the interim review. That's right. Because we're only gonna have six months later, we'll be doing yeah. that again. Does that make sense? All right. And one other thing, I'm I'm worried that. Um, the perception might be that we're not reviewing policies by getting rid of the, I know we don't have a, an obligation to do the committees, but I wonder if the chair and the rest of the commissioners think we should, um, maybe we should feature that as a section on the, the, the agenda, or just if, if it, without a committee, it might lose visibility. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know. <coughs> just have it as a standard. Or something, maybe someone has another, some way so we don't lose the visibility of it. You, know. you could make it uh, on a variable basis if, if something's ready yeah. to be reviewed. Yeah, but if it's it on the agenda review, as policy review. That would be the general manager's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it would make sense to make it a standard part of our meetings, and maybe there's nothing in there on a particular night, and that's fine. Yeah. And I think it will force us to make sure we do, because the reality is we know policies have been an issue in the past with respect to that they are in every company, so it just would force us to look at That's it. a good idea. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah. So when we had the policy committee, we would have, uh, because some of them had substantial changes to them, we would have Chris Pollitt here to go over 
you know, some of the reasons why we had the changes. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll just come through probably as an opinion attached. We, 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 we planning on you want him to be here? Um, um, because that was the other reason why we were doing mul a multitude of them in the policy committee, so that if we did five or six of them, he would just come speak on all five or six. Everyone had the opportunity to ask questions, and then. Well, maybe we could still do them in groups and have Chris here, and we'll just have it yeah. um, a little bit earlier of a meeting, like Tom right. had mentioned. So maybe that's still the way to do it. Okay, Dave. Um, I was just going to say, if we're getting the opinions on what the edits should be right. with an opinion, maybe we can decide at that point whether we also need to have him come. Yeah. And we don't, it wouldn't be automatic, but we could decide, and okay. the chairman could decide whether we need to have that extra. Right. So okay. We actually good. here. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. Okay. I think we can approve some minutes now. I've been trying to do that. <laughs> but it's all been good stuff, though. Who's been interrupting? <laughs> You've been doing a good job, yeah, very Commissioner. Very exciting meeting so far. All right. So we want to have uh, somebody want to suggest a motion on move. I'll, got this I'll one? move, I'll all move right. that the board approve the meeting minutes of February the 22nd, 2018, March 12th, 2018, and March 15th, 2018, as presented. All right. Do we second. have a second? Yep. Second. Discussion? No? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Okay. Those minutes have passed. Mm -hmm. And then this is uh, RMLD board member, Citizens Advisory Board meeting, April 11th. Report, Mr. Hennessy, that was me. I was there with Dennis. And we met at the Linfield Town Hall. And field trip. Yeah, it was a field trip. It was exciting. <laughs> Why did we go to Linfield? Just to We take rotated as part of the contract. Rotated around. Oh, it does, I didn't know that. Uh, okay. Yeah. The agreement, so. We did Wilmington last year, and so. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we did the capital budget. Yep. And Hamid uh, made his presentation to the to the pleasing of the cab, and you guys all voted to pass that. So. We haven't voted yet, but we'll vote. Oh, we're right. We're, we're, we're holding the vote yeah, till yeah, both of them of, together. Right. So Any other right. comments right. from that? Not, um, the format had changed from the year before a, a little bit, but um, tomorrow night we'll fin do the um, operational budget, and then we'll vote on everything. So. Right. Um, I don't see any problems yet. Right. Right. It seemed like there was no concerns. Vivek had a lot of questions, but they were all uh, satisfactory. <laughs> What's that? He came with a whole notebook. <laughs> yeah, he did. He was very prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Reports of the chair. Phil Pacino. Yeah, the meeting of the sub. For the former chair. <laughs> oh, right. The former, former chair. chair. Meeting of the subcommittee yeah. on the payments of the, the town uh, of Reading. The subcommittee met. Last uh, April, last Wednesday, April the 11th. Uh, at that meeting, it was uh, Mr. Uh, Stempeck, myself, uh, Mr. Enzinger, uh, Mr. Hooper, and Mr. Cohen were the five were the members that were there and attended. We originally talked about the proposal that this commission had agreed on in terms of the two-year period of the uh, with the, the minimum the floor being the two and a half or the uh, lower being two the higher of either two and a half or CPI with a maximum of five years with the idea that that would uh, start for two years with a study then in place we kind of morph then to a fact that the Commission that the committee really thought well maybe it should be the study should come first because uh, we had talked about the fact that the the present for even in the present formula it, it looks like that formula may not be sustainable going forward, where there will not be enough capital, because uh, it'll be more and more eating up as time goes on. So, the committee did vote to uh, ask the commission to instruct the department to proceed with the study uh, post haste, to d and to uh, report back as soon as soon as possible as to what uh, the results of the study are. Looking at the uh, the sustainability of the formula, but also the capital needs of the department going forward at this point. And John, you correct me if I got anything wrong. No, here. I think you did. I think you yeah. Did. Okay. Got it correct. Okay. okay. So, is there anything that we need to do with this, as a I as a group that, here? I think the the thing, the appropriate thing to do would be for us to have a motion to instruct the department to proceed forward with the, with with the uh, with the study. And so I'll make the motion if okay. you want. Sure. <coughs> Mr. Chair, oh, yeah. uh, yes. before uh, we do that, so is there, uh, 
Do we feel there's a need to keep the subcommittee in place, and they may well be, yes, or, yes, or is yes, that a yes? Okay. Yes. Right. Period. Period. <laughs> That's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the town, you know, from the the town representative, you know, asked if there's uh, some sort of RFP that that be shared with with the town in terms of the planning and some of this to make sure the things prop that are, they're covered. Yes, that's okay. true. They wanted to review the scope of the right. uh, proposal. <coughs> Given that Monday's town meeting, uh, do we know what the plan is with respect They're to They're just going to give it. He, uh, Dan just talked about giving just an update at that point. Okay. So Which that's I assume would mirror what you just right. articulated. Right, mirror what I, what I said. Okay. okay. Any other comments on that? Yeah. Yeah, I think we just, in, in the committee, <clears throat> just to reinforce this, we we decided that we really needed to understand what the facts were in terms of economic, <clears throat> excuse me, economic development versus decrease in kilowatt hours in our served communities. And so rather than sort of jumping the gun and um, getting into uh, equations that might cause problems in the future, that was the reason we decided that we needed this um, uh, study to be done uh, by a competent uh, independent outside Mm -hmm. uh, for us, and we've uh, all agreed that the general manager uh, should certainly handle that. Great. Okay. All right. Should we make a motion? You got another yeah. comment? Yeah. 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 Uh, just uh, having sat as an observer, not a committee subcommittee member, I, I did get the impression from everybody that there was a sense of uh, uh, urgency around, you know, not making it be a five-year study versus a know six right, month yeah. study mm -hmm. which means at some strategic point uh, it might make sense and I'm sure Colleen will do part of that from her perspective but just having a, a timeline of events because uh, it's easy enough for things to go from a month to three months because we only need one I think that's pretty will happen though we get the standard process going yeah, the pr proposal so from going through the uh, RFP process yeah. and finding the right person or, or company to be able to conduct it and then they'll submit a proposal in terms of you know a, a per chart in terms of when they expect certain things to be accomplished etc and and I think Colleen's um, number that she had thrown out it's an approximate as well uh, date was probably in the six month or so time frame right. I think it would be difficult to see it hit um, being concluded before then, quite frankly. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think it's like always it's mm -hmm. what's the end date, you know, because six months becomes a, everyone Could. knows what six months is today, but, you know, three months from now, six months is, mm. <laughs> is right. nine months. So right. it's putting some actual dates down. But sure. I, I do believe we, we set a, a price, too, on it. I, I we say mean, no more than a hundred thousand dollars, or is it? We say something about that. No, I heard that number. It was a, there was an, a number thrown about. Again, there's no facts involved here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's okay. it was. Uh, it's not okay. We, we <laughs> thought that it was approximately in the order of a hundred thousand dollars. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but but uh, I would suggest that who knows what it what it might be. I don't think it'll be a million dollars, and I don't. No. I don't think it'll be ten thousand dollars. So it's going to be somewhere in between those. Yeah. I, I think the cab representative, which I think was um, yeah. George, George yeah. Uh, maybe he didn't advance the hundred, but I think George was concerned about putting a, a fence around it, uh, just from the cab's perspective. Yeah. Which he was concerned sick. about putting a number, a ceiling on it, or yeah, yeah. ring. Yes, he wanted to have a ceiling on yes. it. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get that impression? I think I did hear him say that. I I I don't know. I I got the impression that it was just a curiosity question. You know, approximately how much would it cost, and obviously that comes out of the our budget, so it uh, has an impact on everyone. But it's very difficult to to uh, project this. Let's yeah. let the professionals do it right. and mm -hmm. come right. back. Can I add something? Yes. Um, when you're doing a study like this, they're going to ask for your assets, the age of your infrastructure by classification. For example, they'll start with how many transformers do you have or how old are they? Mm. And they'll go through each because they have to determine all of your assets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then they'll work through, you know, how much is appropriate to spend on your capital based on your aged infrastructure. Uh, they'll take a look at the reliability study. They'll take a look at your staffing. They'll take a look at your financials, past and present. Um, 
Uh, and then they'll talk to Jane and people in, in Jane's area of expertise on projections on power supply, and they'll go through the entire gamut. So it's going to take a while, and it's going to be pretty detailed, because mm -hmm. we currently don't have an asset management system here. So we have GIS data, but we don't have it by class of hmm. continuing property units. Yeah. So, um, you know, you have to have enough detail in order for them to put together a financial outlook that you know reconciled but is also projecting forward so they can say okay this is what the overview looks like based on what's happening in the industry mm. uh, this is what we think we you should uh, invest in your infrastructure here's what monies we see you having available based on uh, where the markets are going and, and what your sales are, are going uh, you know they probably will look at economic development just concepts in Absolutely. each of the towns right. and again unless meters are spinning they may take a small assumption that there is some viable land, but it's it's difficult because I know, um, you know, one of the comments was, well, if if the if the MWRA goes into North Reading, you know, that could open up and, you know, that could be great, but that's really hard for someone to put into a report or a study. Yeah, there's um, a lot of unknowns, right? There's there's a lot of unknowns. So uh, unless the water infrastructure is already in place and they're already developing. Uh, you, you may have a better chance at that point saying, okay, we're looking at this much, uh, you know, you know, kilowatts of load added based on what's already being built. But other than that, you, you, you know, you're going to have a lot of assumptions that are, that are, that are not going to be, you know, showing, uh, you know, things going way up as far as sales. Right. Um, Sounds like a lot of work for you and your team, too. With your, there's a lot of... Time. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's going to be some work, and I think we have the expertise here between, you know, Jane, Mead, and Wendy to be able to review and give them the input that they're looking for, but the economics of it is going to be challenging. Um, you know, it's any time you're projecting into the future, it's, it's not that easy. No. You know what I mean? And, um, May I ask a question? Yeah. Is the purpose of this to, to find out what our payment can be going forward? Is that the purpose of this, or is there a larger purpose? I, well, the, that's, I, I would suggest that that's a significant portion of right. why we're doing this, mm -hmm. because <clears throat> if the, if the uh, payment to the town keeps increasing at a constant rate, which it has been, or <clears throat> if inflation does increase and it, it accelerates, and our load is going down, it's pretty obvious that uh, as a fixed cost organization, you're going to have an intersection at some point where right. you can't pay it. And you'd love to hope that your economic development would outpace, um, you know, the the um, increase mm -hmm. that uh, in the uh, consumer price index, but that's there's nothing clear that that's going to happen. As a matter of fact, I I sent everyone around an article yesterday, I think, about mm -hmm. how an MIT uh, head of a department for um, motors is uh, is they're developing. Um, radically new motors for appliances, meaning your washers, dishwashers, dryers, et cetera, that will operate at a fraction of the power. So think about LED lighting. So LED lighting displacing regular lighting. Lighting is what, 15% of the whole total power load in general? Uh, so let's drop that to 5%, which has happened. I mean, that's, that's not a gimme. That, that's, that's actually happened. It's not a, uh, something that's going to happen in the future. We're all putting in LED bulbs. Same thing with the industrial drives. I mean, no one wants to talk about that because they don't understand what they are because these adjustable frequency drives are far more efficient than anything that's been in place in the last 25 years. So all industry is adopting them. So it means that the power load is going to be coming down. Mm -hmm. And now if we move into the residential sector and put in these new motors, and I would project that it's probably a five-year transition between design of a brand new motor and implementation from an OEM standpoint before we can all enjoy them, um, it's going to have a major impact in terms of use of electricity. And I suggest you look at your computers. I mean, your computers use a fraction of the energy they did right. five years ago. Mm -hmm. So everything is using less. So that means you need economic development, more businesses, more condos, more residential structures being built. And if you don't have any land, mm -hmm. they're not being built. I mean, we're going to see some here in Reading, obviously. But okay. so yeah. there, there's a lot of it's a complicated picture, right? Yeah. So um, that's why I'm suggesting we get some something wrapped around it, where we can do some projections, some scenarios, and some what ifs. And there are mechanisms you can use to, 
to kind of fill that out, uh, which we don't need to go into here. But um, I think it's it's just the right thing to do for, to have a, a good study done so we're not, again, caught in the future mm -hmm. saying we can't help you yeah. any right. of the towns. Can, can right. I ask another question? Yeah. Long so the, the purpose of the study is to do what? <laughs> I know I know it sounds like a stupid question, but it's to, it's to see what's going to happen we're in the future. We're studying the financials. Yeah. Is is what we're doing okay so that we can determine what our uh, what our net income right. is projected to be hmm. so that we can determine or make recommendations to the board of what to use that net income for okay so I guess I would take a step back and say if we're going to spend another big amount of money on a study it should be to decide what our strategic plan is to make sure we're producing as much income and revenue as and as we can be not like sort of it, this sounds like a passive study like oh what will happen to us in the future based on externalities when I'd like us to be looking around at what we could be doing to make the business more diversified um, to take pay best practices from other municipal light plants which are doing many different things that's the study I'd like to see us be doing because then that's the, that sets us on a course of doing <coughs> Uh, maximizing yeah. what we yeah, do if here. If I could comment on that, Dave, yeah. I, I, I think you're right, yeah. but I think that should be a phase two. Yeah. In other words, first is well, deciding whether you have anything sustainable or not. If right. you don't, then the big is what if? I mean, what do, you, what do you do about that? And so there are, and we talked about this yeah. over the past two years uh, about alternatives that we could look at. And I com I'm in complete agreement with that, but I think we need to get the numbers down first. Right. But as, as Colleen just said, there's a lot of things we don't know. We don't know whether what the power supply situation is going to be necessarily. We don't know how many electric cars are going to come in. We don't know whether MWRA is going to come in. So there'll be all these things that we don't know, uh, and that the consultant's going to say, "Well, I don't know because this could happen or that could happen or the well, other thing could happen." Well, that's no. If, if you're to do it in this, I wasn't going to mention this, but yeah. there are met methodologies for yeah. doing that. As a professional, I can tell yeah, you, sure. use Monte Carlo simulation, okay. and you pr provide what ifs with high probability for people to know to throw all those variables into a pile, and then it creates a, what's called a cloud of uncertainty. And you look at that cloud of uncertainty and find out where you are, okay. and then the, the what it gives you as an advantage is it, it tells you whether you're you have any chance of meeting it, for right. one thing. And if you if you don't, it also tells you what you can do on certain segments of that to change the inputs to it. So I, I know uh, you yeah, I know you you know you know this and I don't. I guess the question I would have is have any other similar light plants done such a study that we could benefit from before we go on our own? I mean because they're all gonna be looking at the same set of variables going forward. Have any of the others done something like this? That we can start by looking at that. Well, I think other utilities have done studies on pilot payments, and you know what what should they be making of a pilot payment? Right. But I don't know that any other municipal is is heading for a convergence mm -hmm. at the speed that we're heading because we do pay a significantly. You're talking about the payment of the town, mm -hmm. the, or the to the towns. Yeah, that's what you're referring to in terms of. I'm, re I'm referring to what we pay out versus. Mm -hmm. Um, the kilowatt hour sales. Sure, I mean our our our, our payments off the charts. We we've 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 realized that, and in the white paper that, that thank you for uh, for ordering that up. We've learned that, and that's a big deal. So I guess, but on the larger question of the future of the mm -hmm. the business and and net income, have any other light plants done a study to kind of look at the big picture, like and use these methodologies? John, I'd like to turn this around and yeah. say. Part of your professional career right now is working for some well, of these, sure. and I'd like to hear from you I in don't terms know. of what I you mean, know and what you found in terms of. Well, these I mean, a lot of them are studying diversification, um, so, and that's interesting, you know. Um, and but we, but, we but are. in the context of what we're talking about, though, Dave, in terms of, you know, uh, payments to the town, uh, and uh, do they see a diminished role in? How much kilowatt hours are going to be selling? That that's really where in I'm. In terms of pilot from. payments, not just not just know. even terms of pilot payments. I mean, where do they see their electric sales going? I think everybody's saying the same thing: is that they're they're flat and declining, and everybody's kind of freaking out about it. There we go. I mean, yeah, <laughs> okay. I mean, there's no doubt about that. We we see it, and they all do. Yeah. And that they're all saying this is a different landscape, and what can we do differently? Yeah. And and a bunch of them are doing different lines of business, uh, other than just the same old, same old. So I, that's why I'm saying, 
uh, and they're, 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 they're partnering with their towns to find how they can synergize and jointly procure or how they can identify savings to the municipality, in our case, four municipalities and schools and public safety and synergize in lots of different ways. Could where the public safety could we in in include that then in terms of the scope of the proposal that we asked the consultant to do? And then if we find out that it's uh, significantly more costly to kind of look at all those different options, we, maybe we trim it back. And that's one way to deal with proposals. You ask for the world, then you go, up, oh, way too expensive, yeah, and I, you trim I, back the other one. I like that idea. recommendations for increased revenue? Yes. Because that... Because, John, you just said it. If, if, if the consumption is getting even smaller, especially with appliances... But the cost of construction and distribution is not getting smaller. Mm. It's Correct. It's getting going up. bigger. It's going up. Yes. It's going up. Um, and, and so we have to maintain this entire distribution infrastructure system, possibly for nothing more than a standby system. You know what I mean? It's but possible. It, but yeah. unless everything is going to become wireless, including all the substations go away, I mean, we still have to deal with, with what we have. You know, regardless of how much usage there is, it all still has to be there, even if everyone is just paying a standby charge. Right. Right. But to speak to your point, Dave, I mean, yes, we still want to have, um, you know, whatever the results are, say, okay, here's here's what you're projecting going to be able to meet. And that's either you're doing it by economic development, increasing your sales, or you're implementing another type of a business or you're putting in HVAC system, you know, split systems or you're putting in electric vehicle charging stations and here's how you have to augment that, whether it's a rate increase or it's these type of things. And hopefully the the result of the study will, will actually give you some of them. But in some areas, you can have everyone buy an electric car in one month and then you have other areas where you could give electric cars away and they don't want them. So it's it, each town is different from how they grasp on to you know the different ways of increasing the revenue but it's you know it's a marketing thing it's a study uh it's it i don't think you can do it all at once all at the same time yeah john yeah so i think it's, it's a great question because i think before we do anything too far along we should memorialize the charter for, for this study because what to me what it really is is an affordability study because we've really we recognize that, as John said and others, the current path we're on isn't affordable because it really isn't tied to any business metric, right? Kilowatt hours or right. anything you tie to in a normal business. So because of that, uh, we're on a path of uh, non-sustainability. So to me, it's a, even though the original question was, gee, can we get more, it, it's the umbrella issue is, what can the RMLD afford to pay that's reasonable, uh, and, and that's a one-off thing, but we don't want to have to do that study every year. So then, once that's determined, then how does that change? Is it tied to kilowatt hours? You know, I think those, so those are right. the, that's the hooks. But to me, it, the, the base issue is what's affordable, because it's not the CPI that's driving the problem. It's the fact that it, the base is, you know, two point something million. Right, so it keeps on growing. Even yeah. a small CPI. It is getting to be unmanageable. So I think if we focus on the affordability thing and then what ways can we connect it to something reasonable in the business, whether it's kilowatt hours, assets, uh, I mean, I'm not suggesting the answer, but there's, it's going to be something. So if revenue goes down, the payment can't go up or right. it'll stay the same. Exactly. Mm. So, and that's uh, you know, a concern, obviously, that we know the town has because they're looking for predictability and, and so forth. But uh, I think we, th those are the issues that we'll deal with once we decide what, what it is, I think. I'd like to add to that, Tom, because if I may, um, Tom said, let's go back to the original charter for why, we're, why we started this conversation, and it was because of the payment issue. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So w why don't we have this thing be about what are the, what are the pay payments the other light plants are paying, and how do they arrive at them? Really limit it. It, it could be a very narrow study just to give everybody the information about what goes on in, in Massachusetts and how they decide these things. I think that should be part of it. That, yeah. That's an addendum as far as I'm concerned. Right. I think that's data you can get relatively easily. Right. I think I think the rest of the study, though, in terms of the projections yeah. into the future are far more interesting mm -hmm. and, um, and, and relevant to us in terms of where we're going. Because if you can look into the future and see even directionally that you're going to be hitting a wall, 
you have some time to kind of make some corrections and get away from it. And then you, you can use the data from the what the study gives other, for the other towns to say, this is one way we can correct it. Let's do what these other towns do. So I, I believe looking into the future is a good thing. And we all do it in our own lives personally, right? right. You look at where you're going to be tomorrow or next week or next year and your job, your family, everything else. I think we need to look into the future. Are we asking for recommendations, too, from this? What kind of consultant yes. would give you a yeah. recommendation? Yeah, so we're asking for recommendations, <laughs> right. I, I put up a sh slide that had a, a, a large chunk of the municipals in, in what they do pay. Right, yes. Right. Um, but if you're asking someone to do a study to go into each and every municipal and say, well, did you do a financial analysis and how did you arrive at that, I think what you're going to find is a lot of what's happening here. Well, this is this is what we did Ad you know, 30 yeah. years ago, and this is what we were doing. So unless they're coming to a convergence, they hadn't been looking at it. Mm -hmm. But you're right. also going to find that there's a lot of utilities that are on a, a 10 year basis. We'll pay you $1 million for 10 years, and then we'll look at it again. So their process is that every 10 years, they take a look at their financials, and, and they make decisions based on that. I, but I think going diving in beyond what they actually pay the town, and especially if you're going to ask them in, in list all of your non-monetary contributions as well, that's going to be a significant undertaking. Um, well, we already know that we're paying more than other municipal aid plans. Yep. I mean, we don't, need to, we don't need a study to tell us that we're out of whack. No. Right. <laughs> and we know it's unsustainable. That's all I'm or, saying. Right. The other way of looking at it is that we're very fortunate. I mean, it's, I mean, so that's all I'm saying. You know, do we, do we, are we, are we spending another 100 grand to ratepayers' money to tell us what we already know? It's like maintenance, Dave. You know, you don't have to change the oil in your car. You can save that money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> we should move on anyway. I mean, you're the chairman, but. Um, Dave, can I ask one thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, we're talking about anywhere from, I guess, $10 to 100000 or $200,000 to this review. But in the budget process right now, is that money already into next year's budget so that you have the money to do this review? Like, where's this money coming from? Is it already in the budget for next year that we're reviewing now and going to um, vote on tomorrow night? No. So we're going to vote on a budget tomorrow night at the CAB. You guys are going to vote on the budget after us. And there's $100,000 that's got to come from someplace. So I don't know if anyone's put that together as far as, Good point. Yeah. you know, where's that? funding coming from because you're not sure exactly how much it's going to cost but it's above it's and beyond the budget, the budget. Yeah. well I'm, I'm hoping to meet with someone this week and that was exactly what I was going to try to figure out was how much was it going to cost is it 10,000 is it 50,000 I'm not even sure yeah but then the CAB will have already voted on a budget that isn't correct because you need not now add another hundred thousand dollars to it mm. so do you have to hold off on the votes and the budget process till you add this well there, aren't there mechanisms for getting around that because if you we have a budget right and three more transformers blow up than you think uh, during the course of a year there's funding for basically being able to take care of that I mean so that'd be more like, of an emergency yeah funding emergency circumstance this is almost a planned circumstance it is so you're looking to approve a budget and say plus a hundred thousand dollars because you want to do a study and I just that's the only problem I have with it is you haven't allocated that money to that budget what's the budget for if you're not gonna put things that you know have significant value in it into the budget hmm. no I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reasonable point I guess there's yeah. two ways you can do it one is you can assume that if the study decision happens after the budgets approved that uh, Colleen will bring forth, uh, if you will, a, an additional cap, uh, whatever it's not capital, I guess, a different expense. additional expense item that needs approval with a justification of how that, because it doesn't have to be, to John's point, it doesn't have to be uh, an, a negative impact. To the, you know, it may be we're going to, we need to do this study, so we need $100,000. The FY 2019 budget has these items we're going to hold on this one or reduce these by act you know what I mean so it doesn't become a net add to but you know I 
I guess the question is, uh, and I, I, I don't know, Colleen would know best in the, in the group, uh, knowing that we want to do this, it's going to cost something, and we think so. Maybe we, we should d ask before the budget's, because uh, it hasn't been closed, right? You're still voting on. Yeah, we haven't voted. We're going to go over the operational budget tomorrow night. You haven't voted on the expense budget, so I don't know if it's worth putting. Well, you just come back and ask permission to spend the money when we find out how much it's going to cost. I mean, I wouldn't. But again, we already know that there's $100,000 above and beyond the budget that we're going to vote on. That just doesn't seem right to me when you know it exists and we're going to add an additional 100. That's going to affect, eventually affect the rate payer. So, right? I mean, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. We I don't, don't know. know that it's $100,000, though. We don't. Well, I, we've heard it, it, comments, of, we don't know what it is, but there's been comments that could be anywhere from 100000 to a million or zero. Or, so we don't really know how much that value really is, right? Yeah, it's not I know it was a little be, exaggeration, but, million, yeah. but I'm saying yeah. we don't know the the value, but we're voting on a budget and completing a budget that is missing $100,000 that we know are going to come back. I don't, I don't know. It's just yeah. something that jumps out at me in sure. budgets I've done in the past. Yeah, we should. Think, yeah. D Dennis, I take your point. I think it's a very good point. And as I think about this and I, the conversation, since the driver of this is the payment, and really what we're getting at is what can, what, what's, what's the future, what does the payment do, what's the convergence, that the money should be spent to identify how we can do things for our towns, specifically savings on by doing services or whatever we can do in joint procurement so that we can save our town's money, um, which is helps them even if we can't keep going with the payment uh, at the levels that we've been doing or the increases that we've been doing. I don't think, it, correct me if I'm wrong, the department has ever done a, a study to see how we can do services to our towns to save them on their IT side or to do joint procurement of common, like we have a, a thing on tonight about janitorial services, things like this where we could do them jointly and find joint savings. And, and that's where we should spend the money to look for those sources of savings because they're going to be there. If we've never studied it, they're going to be there because this is something I have learned um, and I, you know, it's not anything that I, I, I would be involved in, but I just know enough to know that if you look, you will find savings that we could be providing to the town, I'm right sure there's the schools, savings there. public yeah. safety right. in all our towns, potentially. And that would be a better way to spend money than just, hey, what's the future going to be? Gee, I can't do as much. If I can make a comment, yeah. um, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Uh, and Wendy, this is no reflection on you. Budgets are always wrong. Yeah. You're always, budget is a projection into the future, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. They are always wrong. You have never ended a year with a perfect budget, right? You've been off by hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm sure, plus or minus on any given year. So I wouldn't worry about the budget that you're going to approve tomorrow. I wouldn't have any issue with it to the tune of, if it was a million dollars, absolutely. If it was $500,000, absolutely. But 100,000, I'm sorry, in the scheme of things, for an $80 million or so organization, mm -hmm. it's really not there. I mean, the budget will either find more money or, or in certain areas or lose money in other areas or the power will go up and increase and we'll be either over budget or under budget. And we have been every year. I mean, our budgets have never been perfect. Usually, yeah, but I, my, and I agree with what you're saying. The only thing is usually it's the emergency stuff that puts your budget over storms and transformers blowing up, things like that that you couldn't predict. This is something that you're predicting and you're going to add it to the budget. That's my only sure. input I, on it. And I, I, and I agree. Unfortunately, well, they Couldn't we put a placeholder on the budget for, you know, as an estimate since we're still in that process? We don't know what it's going to be, but could we put an estimate just to hold it so that to address Dennis's concern? Uh, well, uh, to, to Dennis's concern, or we just add a hundred thousand dollars to the budget. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Can't do that. And again, I'm not trying to rock the boat. I was just something that came through my head as I'm looking at the way I've done budgets for 15 years. I mean, it's sort of a contingency kind of thing too. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be an emergency, but it could, it could be a contingency because, I mean, suppose someone got—I mean, God forbid—you know, uh, someone got. Uh, an illness and couldn't work or whatever, and now you'd have to pay someone to go out and hire a new person at a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to come in and replace them, and they take, you know, X amount of dollars for a headhunter to go find somebody. You can't predict that, and it's not really an emergency. It just kind of happens in the course of business. So, there's got to be contingencies in our budget, I would think. I mean, do we have any contingency areas? I mean, you, you can always end up absorbing the cost one way or another. Right. 
fact that we're not a line item budget um, and <coughs> we do have operating <coughs> funds to back us up, you know, I, I share John's sentiment that it's never going to be perfect. And, you know, there are many other reasons why the budget would be um, off. I don't really think it's, it's a concern. Yeah, I, am, I and I share your concern about it's, uh, it's our customers' money that we're, we're yeah. dealing with. Uh, but the flip side of that is if we don't get this right, it could be a lot more than that, that we're underwater. Right, because the whole Three goal of this future. is to yeah. watch out for the rate payers' money. That's yeah. what the study is about. Yeah, right. I, mean, I would prefer not to do the study. I really would. Uh, but I just have this sense from everything that's been voiced and where the trends are going <laughs> that we're on a disaster path uh, here, a mm -hmm. uh, financial one. Uh, so we need to really address that somehow. Yeah, well, I, I guess to add to Wendy's comment, I mean, there's a natural, you always budget for full employment. Uh, no company is able to hire replacements to time with the departure, so it, you're always carrying a net fa favorable variance on, on labor, right, generally. Yeah, because you someone leaves with a two-week notice, you just can't, you know, some jobs you can. Sometimes you have positions open as we did this past year, I think you have some, you defer and maybe not for f fiscal reasons, you're just not ready to bring them in or, or whatever. But you know, I, I think the point that Dennis raised is, is important. I think the question really goes back to you guys' operations is we know that we need to spend something. Uh, I think what I'm hearing is that uh, one, we're not gonna sp spend it without approval, and two, that the budget is uh, robust enough that if we needed to spend something in that magnitude, we would be able to handle it without uh, impacting negatively the, the operation kind of thing. Well, what if we, like yeah. It does, well, I mean, we don't, we're not over, it's what, when we say robust. Yeah, I don't mean it, no. We're, you know, we're trying to um, project the most, uh, at the best level we can to these yeah. expenses. Yeah, it really, the, I guess there's enough discretion in terms of, because what if you needed to spend 100, right. it, it, there's no slush funds like that, but you just t change the timing, you may spend that and delay uh, something else timing-wise just to accommodate the... I think it would be a management decision at yeah. that point. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. uh, could I make a recommendation that we have a motion to yes. ask our general manager to uh, investigate getting proposals for this particular study yeah. I think that sounds like a good idea yeah because you know in all honesty I'm supposed to be meeting with this person this week hopefully um, and the question I'm going to ask him is is this possible to determine because you know what what this team has already given you in a spreadsheet might be the best we're going to get Mm -hmm. And that's a showing a convergence. So we make a decision amongst ourselves, okay, this is what we can do for this year and the next year, and we may have to continue to look at it every couple of years as we go. And that might be the best crystal ball we have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going into this like, oh, can, can you uh, read the crystal ball better than I? Mm -hmm. The question is going to be, you know, this is obviously occurring with a lot of different utilities. This is our scenario. What would be the assumptions that you would put into a study to provide to us? Okay, we've kind of already gotten information that's showing that approximately $8 million a year is what you should be investing into your infrastructure on a regular cyclic basis. Right. So we already have that input. Okay, Jane's already knows w what direction we're going in the, in the near future on power supply. What's transmission? I'm not really sure. I think Jane will tell you up, you know, um, you know, it, it, like I said, like Dave's saying, it may be something that, you know, we may not be able to get the best information, but, you know, we're also trying to convey something to the town that, you know, maybe they need a document that's beyond what, what we can do uh, in order for this to be a reality. I mean, you know, we've had a number of conversations, and then the white paper comes out, and everyone is like, okay, now we have the white paper. Now we know it's solid. But we knew it was solid before the white paper came out. So sometimes you do these studies because, you know, it, it gives you more information, and it makes everybody feel good about whatever decision that we have to make. 
you know, we all want to help the community, but again, it's very simple. I mean, if, if, if the sales are going down, we can't have something going up unless the rate goes up to cover it, which we know from the white paper you can't do. Right. So it's just that simple. It's just how quickly do we need to make a change? Can we sustain something flat for five years, then take a look at it again? You know, maybe it's something like that. Yeah, you know, the more I think of it, <coughs> Colleen makes a good point. So, I mean, to, the question may be answered in terms of taking what data we already have and, and maybe some other inquiries outside of the circle that we work in to determine what we're really trying to say is at what point does the payment become unaffordable to the town, right? You need CapEx has to be so much. And we know the boundaries, you know, of how much we can make as utility. So we should be able to figure out at what point, because uh, right now the issue really, Dennis, is and everyone, if we don't address the issue, it's going to keep going up. It's, you know, the, the agreement calls for, you know, uh, with inflation, CGI right. in, mm -hmm. index, and we know that's not going to work for anyone. So yeah. we can just say we'll stop doing it, but that's not a, you know, that that just stops it. We need to somehow tie it to some realistic. Here's what we think it can be without disadvantaging the rest of the the cab, you know, group. And then, well, you made a motion. Yes. Well, so I, I would like <laughs> so <laughs> general manager to investigate to the best of her ability. <laughs> Uh, whether it makes sense to have a study to engage a consultant to answer the kinds of questions that she feels should be in the scope of the study and, and let let it see then provide us with feedback at our next meeting that sounds good do we have a second on that I'll second that all right I think we had a lot of discussion uh, afraid to ask for more <laughs> but I'll say it because it's part of the procedure <laughs> discussion <laughs> uh, yeah I just think I will say I think it's what Colleen just said made a lot of sense she's gonna find out if it even if there's even more that she can be learned than what we already know so it doesn't mean we're approving a study or even approving funding for a study we're just asking Colleen asking to have Colleen the conversation to. right so with that that's right so all in favor yeah sure. all right okay motion passed well, that was a long one. <coughs> okay, what is next here? <coughs> General Manager's update, reliability reports. I'm going to turn it over to Hamid. All right. Protect the time. Good evening. <laughs> Hello. Okay. You all have the spreadsheet, right, in front of you for the reliability recommendations? We do. I think I could spend the whole night to talk about uh, every single item, but I'm not going to... Oh, that would be wonderful. I'm not going to take up your time. So I'm just going to give... Any questions for me? I'm going to give you just the highlights. All right. All right. Since the last time, uh, we have actually one item that is complete. You see, you see the, there's a, there is a lot on this uh, spreadsheet. Uh, I mean, there are like about uh, 71 items that, you know, we have uh, uh, identified. And most of them, they're completed. Uh, there's some in progress, and the rest are in planning, which you have the explanations on the far right and the, the RMFD work plan. What we completed since the last time you could see that on uh, the third page, item number 52, the station 3, 15 kV breakers, number two, the closing spring assembly that need, needed to be replaced. I'm uh, glad to announce that the station 3 work is all completed. Everything hey. went through A to Z. The automation is completed. The breakers are uh, mm, the main, uh, being maintained right now. The relays are replaced, and also the last piece of uh, the equipment that we needed to install to bring the uh, arc flash under the acceptable rating for the safety of the workers. The work just got completed last week. Mm -hmm. So now we are fully in compliance with uh, the arc flash requirements, uh, which followed by the study that was done, uh, uh, reliability study, and the study that we did for the arc flash. So. That is 100% completed. 
The other good news that I have for you, and that would be the item number 25, the booth study under the outage management system. That outage management system that we've been talking about, automation air there, it's on first page. The bottom, <coughs> item, bottom number item. Tw 22, oh, item 22. Item number 22. Okay. Under the outage management system, that's being installed as we speak. So the uh, con uh, consultant, they started uh, installing that surveillance. Today, it's going to be uh, completed by end of the week, and the staff, they're going to be trained next week, and uh, that would be completed hopefully by end of next week. Uh, where are we going after that? Uh, we're going to go to IVR. We are interviewing the IVR companies now as we speak. There's a committee that includes me, Jane, Wendy, the MIS, and uh, two other engineers that we are looking into. I'm sorry, what is IVR? IVR, that's an in interactive voice response. Ah, okay. That's the same thing that, you know, in national grid, uh, then, you know, uh, in, in grocery, you see that, you know, if there's an out outage, uh, then a national grid is going to send you the voice me message. Ah, that we right. know you're out. You're going to be out approximately for an hour, an hour and a half. Right. And, you know, the, the crews are dispatched to fix the problem. So basically, it's going to give us the vehicle so we can get back to the customers, putting their mind at ease that, you know, we know you're out, we, we are aware of that, and we are doing something about it, and it approximately takes how many minutes or hours in order to fix the problem. So right. it's very efficient. So we bring in more technology into the mix, and that's going to save us lots of money. I mean, this is the money well spent because that's going to reduce the truck rolls and you know it, it's going to increase the efficiency and less frustrations for our uh, customers during the outages that everybody has anxiety you know when i'm going to be back and whether do they know that i'm out and you know it tells them being basically that you know well we are on our way to fix your problem that's what the next is coming next year so we're doing that, and the other one under the distributed generation program, uh, item number 22 has several sections. That one also, as you know, we got a million dollars grant from the governor, Governor Baker, for installing the four and a half megawatts bat battery storage at station three. We already did the gener generator at two and a half megawatts, and now this is gonna be added right next to it. And uh, that, that is in progress. So what number is that? I mean, That's also number I, item 22, the last, uh, uh, the last item. The last item. Yeah. Under the 22. So that one is also being uh, planned. So we're making progress on, on that as well. The rest of them, they basically are either in planning uh, or ongoing or uh, they're in progress. And most of them, they're very station, the new Wilmington substation that uh, <coughs> we have a proposed site for construction of the new substations and uh, we just got the letter of intent on uh, the site that you know we had in mind so to see if approach the town to get the variance and uh, so we are doing the due diligence in order to come up with uh, uh, hopefully we can get the permit and then uh, continue the construction, start the construction. So basically, this is it. We also are making some feeder adjustments uh, that, you know, so to basically balance the load on the feeders. That is some of these items that, you know, they, they, they identified. So that's being done. Analog being one of them. They got three feeders, two feeders that, you know, they actually feeding and one backup. Uh, so they're doing some readjustments of the load inside, so to shift the load uh, down the ratings of, uh, uh, to bring actually up the ratings of the cables that uh, right now they're kind of congested and uh, overloaded. So we're working with the customers and some of the planning as part of the new substations that's going to help to provide load relief for Station 3 and Station 4, as well as with the customers' cooperations, which we're getting that. That should be, we, we, we're going to be in good shape uh, at least for ban load balancing. The other one that you know it needs uh, is uh, really it's getting uh, uh, completed nearly. It's done almost 99%, and that's uh, implement the GIS upgrade program. The GIS is completed. Uh, what we did, that's item number six. 
Uh, the reason I don't have it completed because right now we are uh, we just sent a model to Millsoft. That's an engineering model that uh, be reviewed and to be cleaned, uh, so we can use that for engineering studies that they're coming up on our engineers. They do that. So uh, we are almost there. Almost one percent left. Uh, hopefully, within the next couple of weeks, two weeks or so, by end of the month, I should have the Millsoft model, and that's a substantial savings that it's going to bring for us because now we're going to be able to do have more tools to do engineering analysis in-house as opposed to you know farming it out for some specific uh, applications and studies mm -hmm. now it's not going to i'm not saying that you know we're not going to go out to any you know consultant anymore we still there's some areas that because you know we uh, we are training our staff as well as we don't have the resources in-house ready to do that, those specific projects. We're still going to have to use consultants, but that's going to reduce the cost for us for a number of and in, in improving the efficiency of engineering and more science, science being added to uh, the jobs and planning that, you know, moving forward. Mm -hmm. So that concludes my meeting, basically my uh, report. Uh, if you have any specific questions on any of these uh, 71 uh, items, I'll be more than happy to explain that. Okay, any questions for me? Just a comment, I think it's great uh, the way it's getting tracked. It shows progress and <laughs> I think it helps justify why we're spending so much CapEx. Yeah, that's right, yeah. that's right, it is. And most of those are being taken care of, the ones in the <coughs> through the capital authorization projects. And these are what the consultants they have, you know, identified. And there, there's actually more to it that we know of. And we have other programs. As you see, I'm going through my presentation. You see those maintenance areas that, you know, well, they are not really captured. They're talking about it, about the lack of maintenance and the need for system improvements and stuff like that. Yeah. But they haven't come down to nitty gritty of what, you know, should be done next that we have implemented those uh, uh, programs for uh, maintaining our assets in the system. Good. Yeah. Any other questions for me? Mm -hmm. Dennis, mm -hmm. do you have any? <coughs> Thank you, Meet. Thanks, Thank Meet. I think, Jane, you're next. Thank you. Um, just a couple of announcements. RMLD will be participating in Reading's Earth Day, um, and that's going to be taking place this Saturday, uh, April 21st, from 10 to 2 at the Parker Middle School. Uh, so if anyone is um, out there, we'll have a booth there. Um, in addition, we are continue to, continuing to host our Save Energy and Money series that we're holding at the various libraries. Uh, we were in Linfield in Wilmington last week. And on uh, Thursday, April 26th at 6 o'clock, we'll be at the Reading Library. Um, and then on May 7th, we'll be in North Reading at the Flint Memorial Library. And those are both at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to report. You said uh, 10 to 2 at Parker Middle School this Saturday? Correct. Mm -hmm. Is it an outside thing? Is it, is um, <clears throat> I think they'll have some electric vehicles that will be outside. And then they'll have vendors and booths on the inside. So they'll be utilizing both the weather permitting outdoors and uh, inside. Okay. I believe it's in the gym at the middle school. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Good. Uh, we're here to report on February. Um, the first slide uh, that we look at here is looking at uh, spot market prices, which is the day ahead in the real time prices. And it's looking at the five years from 2014 to 2018. Um, as you can see from the graph, uh, both the day ahead and the real-time prices have dropped considerably in 2014. Uh, the average day ahead price was $156.24. Um, and in February 2018, that dropped to $39.48. Um, it should be noted, though, that there was a, approximately a 30% 30 30 increase between 2017 and 2018. Um, that went from $30.33 in the day ahead to $39.48. Um, and in the real time, it was $29.02 to $36.88. Um, RMLD does take power in the spot market, um, so we take advantage of those low-cost service compared to 2014. Jane, just out of curiosity, yep. I probably ask this quite often, but 
uh, that's a huge difference uh, from 2014 to 2018. What happened in the environment to cause that? Uh, in 2014, we had the cold snap, um, and that was the beginning uh, of the natural gas constraint. Got it. Um, and again, weather plays a considerable role. Um, if you can see, you'll see in the next couple slides, we looked at heating degree days, which kind of gives you a benchmark of um, Great. what really drives those things. Um, and, and, and this next slide. Ooh. We're just conserving power there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Go ahead, Jane. Okay. Just, just yeah, we, we have, uh, have the slides, and again, yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll be attached. Um, we, got it, we got it right here. On our the next slide story, looks at the embedded fuel cost for energy and then the heating degrees. Uh, and so, again, if we look at the, uh, the bar charts that are in front of you, those are the heating degree days. So in 2014, there was a, a 1,179 heating degree days. Uh, 2015, that was 1,450. Uh, and then in 2018, it was 809. So this past February, what this tells you was the warmest February within the last five years. Um, and warmer then, than March, we heard, right? Pardon me? Yeah, I heard it was actually warmer than March. Yeah, I, I, I believe that, because yeah. we had a lot of those storms then March with a lot of the snow, and, and February was considerably warmer. Um, and then if we look at the fuel cost in a, in a cents per kilowatt hour, uh, we were at 16, uh, 6, 6.15 cents in uh, 14, um, and in 2018, that was about 5.88. And then, again, comparing 17 to 18, there was about a 16% increase in our embedded average fuel cost. Um, then the, the next, the, the, the final slide kind of looks at just the overall cost. Of that, so uh, again, we kept the heating degree days just to kind of show you how that tracks pricing. Um, and then in 2018, uh, RMLD's average energy cost was 2.9 million compared to 2.5 million in 2017. So there was about a $439,000 increase, um, and uh, what what attributed the the, the bulk of that was um, the addition of uh, hydro energy. We had considerably more hydro in 2018 than we did in 2017, um, and that comes at a little higher cost. So the, those costs averaged around 216,000, um, and then the balance of the the difference of that uh, could be contributed to price increases in the forward contracts that we had acquired throughout the years. So one of the one of the lower price contracts uh, from BP Energy expired, and then we picked up an additional um, contracts of EDF Trading uh, and Nextera. So those were the those were the driving forces um, of the overall cost. <coughs> and that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. All right. Any questions for Jane? Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane. Thanks, Jane. All right. Wendy, are you uh, coming on up too? Once again. Financial report. <coughs> Financial report um, for the first eight months of the fiscal year ending February 28th. Should we be in the handout, Wendy? Is that There's two different handouts. So you have your financials and you have these. Okay. Got it. Okay. So uh, I thought I'd try a different format tonight. It might be easier for you to follow. So I kind of bulleted, um, highlighted some of the um, statements I typically make about particular items on the on the um, financials. So the first um, bullet: unrestricted cash of fifteen point three million dollars covers almost two months of operating expenses um, at February twenty eighth of eighteen. The accounts receivable, uh, looking at the balance sheet, are 97% current, and I wanted to clarify that we consider up to 90 days as current because it moves, uh, you know, it moves pretty quickly within the 90 days with each customer, so that's why we consider that current. Then if you staying on the balance sheet, net plant increased by $3.7 million as compared to last year at the same time. And then if you wanted to uh, follow in the financials, you could. Going to the profit and loss, loss statement, the base revenue increased by 1.1% year-to-year, 
but there was a decrease of kilowatt, sale, kilowatt hour sales of 1.7 percent. And uh, there's also a decrease of the base revenue as compared to the budget of 1.8 percent. Purchase power fuel expense exceeded purchase power fuel revenue by $2.2 .2 million, and purchase power capacity and transmission, or PPCT, expenses exceeded PPCT revenue by about $412,000. Wendy, can I ask a question about that? Yes. On the last one, revenue went up by 1.1%, but sales went down by one7 Yes. So that means we raised our right. prices faster than sales no, went down. No, actually, the sales are going down fast more than what we increased our rates. And then operating and maintenance expenses are currently under budget by about 4.7%, and that's at the end of February. But um, looking at the projected March numbers with the storms, uh, it's not looking that way for March, just so you know. Okay, so um, and I thought it would be um, kind of relevant since we've been having some discussions in the past couple of months uh, with, with the slides I'm presenting. They're not necessarily... Uh, in regards to February, but I, I think it's important to, uh, for everybody to get a better understanding, and sometimes visual aids help. So the first slide I, I had prepared was um, the stacking of the different buckets, if you will, of where the capital funds come from. So if you look at the blue represents the beginning balance that's supposed to, if everything you know is in line perfectly, which we all know it's not going to be, uh, the blue represents the beginning balance that's projected to uh, start the depreciation fund off. And then the orange is the actual depreciation expense for the year, the 3% that, um, that we expense that goes into the depreciation fund. And then you have your gray, your operating fund transfer. So that's what we've collectively come to decide. We should transfer every year, projecting out the six years, in order to uh, meet our capital needs. And then you have your yellow, it's bond proceeds and other proceeds. And other could mean um, some forced uh, jobs by the state of Massachusetts, for example. Um, so then this is what we are currently projecting that we would, we would be going out to bond for in order to meet the capital needs going forward for the years um, in the future. So then you have the green bar represents all your capital improvement projections for the next six years as well. So the goal here is not to get below a uh, million dollars. So at the end of FY23, you notice there that uh, we're right in line with, with our goal, which is why we need to continue to add to the funds in order to meet our goal at the end of the day. So Wendy, this, do you add the orange and green if you're looking at it? Yes, yeah, so the, the stacking is just to show you the buckets yeah. of where the different um, funds are coming from and the total I didn't put the totals on the top. If you want to know the totals, I can go through that with you. Well, just so look at FY18. Okay, Does FY18. We're spending $8 million. In as compared to uh, $10.4 million um, in total funds. But and then what's the con isn't there a connection between the depreciation amount and that $8 million? Is there any? No, the $8 million is the, the total that we're going to be spending. So the depreciation is on gross plant. We're depreciating 3% of gross plant. Okay, so we're trying to make sure we have enough funds to um, support our capital spending. Okay. Do you want me to go through the totals of each year? Of how no, I was just no, trying okay. to. So if you just look at FY18, mm -hmm. all in, we're spending eight million on capital improvements. In, in FY18, uh, we're projected to come in at eight million dollars. Yes. Okay. okay. All right, so we'll move to the next slide. So the next slide um, shows the projected net income as compared to um, what we're projecting the rate of return to come in at. And uh, that shows you that downward trend that Colleen's um, been talking about. So there's our net income in dollars and how it's going to affect our rate of return at the end of the day. And now this does take into account the um, rate increases that we have uh, projected in our budget and um, still trying to be responsible to the customers as well, um, trying to get to that 6% ROR at the end of the six years, hoping that we can stay there um, with our expenses. Well, just back in the 
Aren't there some tax, I don't quite remember all the details, but aren't there some new uh, tax laws that will impact what you can take for um, depreciation when, when you can expense it? Uh, I don't remember all the details. Yeah, you know, with business expenses, they've raised the uh, what you can deduct up front. That's I, that's now a million dollars. So you thought it was a half a million dollars, but that's something that wouldn't affect here. But I also thought there was some impact on uh, how you uh, how you could handle uh, depreciation versus no, expense. Depreciate. Well, yeah, there's those rules have been around whether it's expense or capitalization. Right. But there's some rules, but the best that's not a new rule. No, I thought there's some changes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Okay. And then the final slide um, is, is showing the downward trend in the kilowatt hour sales and what we're projecting is going to happen based on what um, Jane has been saying that the kilowatt hour sales are decreasing by about a percent every year and uh, also where it lies with our rate of return. So I mean I just I just wanted to present these slides based on our conversations okay. the past couple of months maybe it's some um, you know it shows some clarity to what's happening. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of scary. Yep. Yes. Yep. Wendy, I just want David asked the question. I wasn't sure I fully followed what you said. So, on your f first slide, base revenues increased by a little over one percent, right? With a decrease in kilowatt sales. Yes. So that. So what? What else is impacting base revenue besides kilowatt sales? That's it. But we increased. Well, we increased the rates at seven one, seventeen. Right, we increased, I, I want to say, four, three, four percent? I don't remember. The overall, uh, no, so last that's year. All, last that's year. all a function of the rate increase. Do you remember? It was, last year it was two to four percent based overall. on, overall, based on uh, the class. So the two to four percent increase is giving us our overall 1.1 percent increase in yeah, base I mean, it's revenue. It, it's equivalent to a price increase, basically. Right, right. exactly. Right. So if we hadn't put the, the increase in, we would be, you know, uh, we'd, we'd Revenue's down, 1.1%. Right, exactly. mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. yep. Okay. Hmm. That concludes my presentation. Any other questions? No. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. These are helpful slides. Yes. Thank they you. fit in. Thank you, Wendy. Discussion. I'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Okay. Me, you, you back up. No, it keeps on coming back for more. <laughs> Need some money. Well, I'm here to give you a report for the month of uh, February for uh, engineering and operations. The first slide basically is showing you the capital improvement projects spendings for the month of February. And you could see the next column, the year-to-date actual and the what was budgeted and the remaining balance on the far right. So we're basically making good progress on those projects. Like what I men, I've been mentioning, most of these projects, they come into an end the last quarter of uh, the uh, fiscal year. Uh, we just finished two projects, and there are a couple more that they're ongoing, and you're going to see these expenditures going up, basically maybe going a slightly a little bit over uh, the what was budgeted for, but uh, for good reasons. So that's the first page. The next uh, slide basically is giving you the routine capital in constructions. These are the ones that they are they're, they're part of the capital improvements, but they're not projects, uh, such as the pole settings and transfers, overhead underground constructions, pole damages or cracks, crackdowns, the knockdowns, uh, the hazmat and oil spills, porcelain cutout replacements, and going all the way to the last, which is the miscellaneous capital cost like capital equipment. Uh, and also um, uh, all the uh, stuff that goes into the infrastructures. The overall is, uh, spending for the month of February, which was a slow month, was $172,803, uh, bringing the year, year total to $978,598. Uh, the next slide shows you the facilities, integrated uh, resource division, and uh, IT departments. Uh, the spendings in the month of uh, February and uh, the total spendings uh, for the year up to date, uh, year to date. So 
You see in the last uh, uh, actually chart in the bottom, you see that uh, the total spendings for the month of February was uh, 443,124, bringing in year to date to 3,936,645. And what was budgeted was uh, 7,685,521. The remaining uh, uh, was 3,748,876 dollars. So we are on track. The next slide shows you the routine uh, maintenance the, uh, and transfer. So among all of them, we're making good progress. Transformer replacement pr uh, program, the Padmont Transformer replaced approximately 28.5%. Almost one third of those, uh, you know, very scary Padmont Transformers that, you know, they leak and, you know, they fail. And yet they're almost one third, yeah, but we're not out of the woods yet. We still got plenty to go. The overhead, uh, in the overhead category, approximately 20% uh, we have replaced, and we're getting more and more done as these uh, uh, capital improvement projects are uh, underway. Uh, poll inspections, uh, we are, we've made good progress. I mean, uh, so far we've replaced uh, 193 poles uh, that have been replaced. 178 of those 193 transfers have been completed. We are really do doing well on transfers. If you see there's still some double poles in the communities, that's because, you know, unfortunately, we don't have any control over Ryzen and Comcast. Right. And I know the people that might be thinking that, you know, well, oh, that, that double pole been there and, you know, RMLD is not removing it. It's not us, you know. It's, uh, we are pretty much keeping up with other uh, stuff that need to be transferred. And, uh, I mean, what's the process like if you find that mm -hmm. um, Comcast, for example, is not taking action? Do we have any leverage with them, or is it just squeaky wheel? How do you... The, the best way to do that is really, you know, when uh, they either con contacting them directly. Obviously, the customers, they don't know, but when, if they call us, we let them know that, you know, this is Verizon or Comcast. They can call them and, you know, push them. We do that as soon as we find out and we see that they, are, they, they have the same program as we do we are all following the engine program you're going to see that in the right. slide so they know they're aware of you know the backlog and you know what what's in uh, their plate so uh, it's not like they don't know that they know it uh, I think most of it like you know Verizon is trying to get rid of the poles they get rid of the pole business uh, all total together so they have cutting back forces. So that's why it's taking so long for, you know, pole placement. So they're more behind than we are on they the same types of issues. They are much behind than where we are. And okay. then, you know, the other way to do that to really push them is when they come for pole petitions and here to the towns and, you know, asking them the selectmen, they could uh, tell them that, you know, well, we are concerned about those double poles and, you know, you need to, you know, take care of those and give us report at the next, you know, do we need to get that message to the selectmen? Um, do they have a very explicit sort of statement from us right. to, to not let Verizon get away with doing this? That would be helpful. That would be very helpful. How do we because, you know, do that? It's yeah, because aren't they, I think I overheard that the town was negotiating with Telecom right now on contracts, weren't right. they? I think they're right. in the middle of that now. Right. So this might be the right timing. That would be the right timing to do that, you know, to let them know that this is what the problem is, and you know, we are seeing more and more of those. Uh, the ones that are within our controls, they're getting done in a timely fashion. But you know, we cannot remove the pole, but un unless everybody has transferred. And uh, uh, in our annual, by semi-annual meetings that Colin and I and Jane, we we, we have, we bring it, that report to the. Towns, they, they see that the selectmen, they are being, you know, they're seeing the basically what's, uh, uh, what, it, what it looks like in every community. But it wouldn't hurt, you know, if we send a reminder to the selectmen that, you know, when they come in or they get into contact with them, to but remind we, them. We have visibility to what's on the selectmen. Uh, Their agenda. Agenda, yeah. right? Well, um, I know that was on the agenda. I was, <coughs> I think it was on the agenda this past week. Really? Yeah. I mean, what I'm thinking is whether one of us should, w with the right words, uh, be at the meeting. Yeah, and what's the exact message, I mean, that we want to convey? That, you know, they need to expedite their, their, their uh, uh, transfers. That's what it takes. 
you know, if they no do contract. that in a timely fashion. Some of those, <laughs> yeah, no some of those <laughs> transfers, they're sitting there for months. I mean, in our system. So it's really not about the pole removal. It's more about transferring the wires. That's, that's right. That's right. And it takes a long time. They don't have, uh, you know. How far behind things. are they? Well, I, I'm going to get to that slide. Right. You, you're going right. to see that, you know, uh, where we are now. But, you know, there are quite <laughs> few that, you know, they could take care of. And uh, I don't know how they're set up. But we make the phone calls when we see that something, you know, it's been sitting in the queue for lo so long. Or when the customers, they complain and we tell them, it's not really us. Please <laughs> don't think that, you know, <laughs> we, are <laughs> we are holding you up. But we make the phone calls, but, you know, that's the only thing we can do, but we don't have any leverage to push them to uh, expedite it, put it this way. All right. Uh, any other questions on this? You know, no. This is my favorite subject, too. So, <laughs> 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 uh, Quarterly inspection of the feeders, we do that. The, the crews have been doing a pretty good job to stay on top of that, making sure that, you know, there are no obvious signs of deteriorations or problems on the lines. Manhole inspections, it's underway. The porcelain cutouts, we're making uh, progress on those as we're going through these capital improvement projects and replacing those or removing them out of the service. Uh, the next uh, slide that shows you the tree trimming. We are right on target. We're doing great. Uh, obviously, we took a lot of uh, the, took care of a lot of those trees during the, these four back-to-back -back storms. Right. <laughs> so yeah. they've been cutting a lot, and you know, uh, some of them unfortunate because the whole tree came down and yeah. on the lines, the and they made one. extensive damages. But mm -hmm. uh, pretty much, we took care of them. Uh, that is still we uh, we making uh, uh, we're going around still dealing with some of the uh, leftovers from the storms. Substation maintenance, that's going great. We haven't seen any obvious uh, hot spots in any, on any of the substations that needed to be taken care of. The underground substation upgrade, this is huge. This is what my biggest concern is, and that's what we've all been talking about because the, uh, the infrastructure of the RMLD facilities in underground, they're old. We have a program that, you know, we prioritize by the age and we go going through these communities and we basically uproot everything and, you know, replace everything, uh, upgrade them. Uh, we got uh, transformers and communities that, you know, you know they, I mean, the facilities that they're over 45 years old. And, you know, the average age of those, it's 20 to 25. And, you know, when you push it that long, you know, the, right. The system hasn't been maintained that could show that you know get into trouble uh, so recently we completed the crestwood state in north reading aspen road and long hill lane and we got the list of the in progress communities that you know uh, we are taking care of shasta drive uh, westover drive greenbrier drive in North Reading, uh, Great Neck Drive in Wilmington, Gandalf State, Wilmington, Deerfield Place in North Reading, and Cherokee Lane in Wilmington. So all of those, uh, the construction of those is in progress. So that's gonna improve the reliability in a great deal. Uh, making good progress on those. Double poles. Uh, this is basically, as you know, we got approximately 16,000 poles, 50%. Uh, the ownership between Verizon and RMLD is 50-50. But the custodial, uh, RMLD has the North Reading and half the Reading, and uh, the, the rest of the communities, the custodial is with Verizon. And, you know, the custodial meaning that, you know, after all the transfers are taken place, then, uh, you know, then uh, in those areas that we have the custodial, we remove the pole bot, and the areas that Verizon has the custodial, they have to remove the pole bot. So again, going back to the double poles, when you see that, you know, those poles in uh, Wilmington or, you know, Linfield or half the Reading, when you see them that, you know, they're not being taken care of, this is the responsibility of Verizon uh, to remove the pole bot. So, uh, we can't touch it. Um, if we do, there would, would be a huge union <laughs> issue. Hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, the next slide shows you the engines. This is the program that I really like because all of the uh, uh, utilities, they have this, basically they're part of this program. They know basically it's a ball in court uh, uh, program. 
uh, that they know exactly how many they have and there's absolutely no way that they're not aware of how many devil poles they got or how many transfers uh, and you know how many pole bots they're gonna have to re uh, remove in Linfield you could see that RMLD has only six transfers to do in North Reading we got uh, 10 transfers and uh, 35 uh, pole bots that needs to be re removed <coughs> if you recall at one point it was 99 and then, you know, we've been taking care of those trying to, after, you know, making so many phone calls to Verizon, Comcast, pushing them ready to do their transfer. So we brought it down. Uh, uh, but these numbers, they go up and down. Uh, you know, most people, they don't like to see them going up. I love to see them going up because that means that, you know, well, we are making improvements. Uh, so something is being done. And that shows how, you know, we are getting going around making improvements uh, to the and improving the reliabilities. But we're taking care of them in a timely manner. So in uh, Reading also, we got 25 transfers and uh, 52 pole bots that needs to be removed by Verizon. In Wilmington, we got eight transfers uh, that Verizon, uh, Verizon got eight transfers. We got uh, 32 transfers and uh, four pole bots that needs to be removed by Verizon. Basically, that's his status. And and um, uh, my staff, they're really they're good in following up with these and they're making the phone calls. We got good contacts in with Verizon, but again, there's only so much you could push. So uh, the next slide, the last slide is the reliability. As you could see, the reliability in all areas pretty much is well below the national and the regional averages, both SADI, KD, and SAFI, and we're doing good. We're doing good. It doesn't mean that, you know, we don't need to uh, do anything. And, you know, we're doing good because, you know, we're keeping up with the maintenance. And we've got a long way to go in order to keep these numbers where we'd like to see them. So uh, it's, a, it's a continued effort, and uh, we need to make sure we keep up with those programs, <coughs> and, uh, spending money on the system. <coughs> The last uh, slide basically is showing the causes of outages. As you could see, again, for so far uh, in to February, these numbers are going to go up a little bit in Mar March because we had uh, the storm, those back-to-back -back storms. But pretty much we're well below uh, the five years average on all categories, as you could see. Um, you know, and that shows we are, those maintenance programs are mm. paying off. Right. At least it's a huge difference. Yeah, it's it's coming. It's 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 getting better and better. And that was my last uh, slide. If you have any questions, more than two, no, I'm happy to I'm give you. Thank you, Amir. Yeah. By all means, Dennis. No. All right. Thank you, Hamid. Good. You're welcome. I'm going to uh, stay here for the bids, I guess. Yeah, some bids. Right. Right. Yep. Be coming. I guess the Sorry, we're out of time. Right? <laughs> Jane. <laughs> Jane, you're welcome. So um, we're going to, somebody want to read a motion? Or do you want to do the background? No, How do we do we, it first? You read the motion first. Let me motion, the motion first. Okay. Move the proposal 2018-36 for residential energy audits be awarded to Energy New England for uh, $176,400 pursuant to MGL Chapter 30B as the lowest responsible, responsive and responsible bidder on the recommendation of general manager. Okay. Second. Yeah. Second. It's a three-year contract, right? Yeah, yeah, three-year three contract. contract. It says it right there. It doesn't need to be part Do you want to give us the background sure, on that? Sure, I'll do this one. Um, okay. RMLD um, sent out um, bids on uh, March 26 to 17 companies. On April 9th, we received three responses, uh, one from Energy New England, one from Healthy Homes, and one from Strategic Serendipity, LLC. Um, they were analyzed by staff. Um, overall, the bid is lower than the current vendor that we currently have uh, by approximately $7,300 over that three-year period. Mm -hmm. um, in evaluating all the bids, um, Energy New England provided uh, sample reporting, which included value added to the RMLD customers. Um, 
They are going to be reduced a digital computer report <clears throat> for all audits performed uh, that will go directly to the customer as well as RMLD. Uh, RMLD will have access to all collected data. Right now, currently, um, it's handwritten, and then we have to go and create a database and then extract the data, so it'll be a much more efficient process. Um, and it also, uh, the report will also include a return on investment for the customers who are actually considering making the recommended um, changes, whether that's insulation, appliances, et cetera, and that will be based on RMLD's current rates. Um, so um, overall, they're very pleased and uh, we're very comfortable with uh, proceeding forward with energy and renewable. Great. Question here. Jane, Jane is curious, do these, do they make the money exclusively on audits or do they have a potential for a revenue if they are contracted by the homeowner? Yeah, the way we do it, uh, we keep it very separate. Like with the existing vendor, uh, the cost per audit includes just the audit and we specifically ask that uh, they don't make any sales pitches because sometimes they have a list of vendors or are affiliated with a certain vendor. Um, uh, the way we did it with the current uh, vendor is we had them sign a piece of paper saying that they were requesting uh, additional information. Uh, and then again, we, we, we talked to all of our customers and we always recommend that they get three um, references, look for three bids so that they have comparable scopes in, in, in moving forward with any project. Good. Okay. So... Um, Okay, so we can vote all in favor. Yep. Okay, pass okay. five zero. Yep. And the next motion, who's going to read we'll this one? Move the proposal 2018-38 for pad mounted transformers be awarded to Wesco Distribution Inc. for $33,540 and Howard Industry Inc. Care of Power Supply Sales Group for $74,089 for a total of 107,629, pursuant to MGL's chapter 164, section 56D, on the recommendation of the general manager. Okay, a second? Second. All right, discussion, background? Yeah, these are the basically Padmont transformers for those underground uh, uh, subdivisions that we talked about, that you'll be uprooting everything and you're trying to upgrade all, uh, all the transformers and cables. And yeah. So this is what this project, as well as the new construction, new underground subdivisions. So uh, the, there was, we, uh, we had the, in the budget 93,804 out of that, you know, 107,629. The difference is being paid by a developer for the underground, the new subdivisions that they go on in Martin's Landing in North Reading. So we are using exactly what was money, the, the money that was in the bu budget was appropriate for it. The extra is going for the de development that, you know, we already collected the money from mm -hmm. the, the customer. So basically that's what it is. We send a bid out to 15 vendors and we receive the response back from a number of them, from four actually. And uh, Wesco was the lowest responsible, responsible, uh, responsible, responsive better uh, for $33,540. The Howard Industries and the power sales for $74,089, bringing the total to $107,629. So, so the developer will be paying the $10,000 difference? They have paid already, I believe. They've oh. received the money. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, mm -hmm. or yeah, they're going to pay. They were you charge them for the you know transformers. Yes, great. the rest it is. Great. It is. great. Okay. okay. All those yeah. in favor? Yeah. Okay. Motion passes. Ready right. for the next one? And the next one. Yeah. Move the bid 2018-40 for janitorial services be awarded to SJ Services Inc. for $101,424 pursuant to MGL Chapter 30B as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder on the recommendation general manager. Okay, second. Second. <coughs> Again, this is a three-year contract. Mm -hmm. Three-year yeah. contract, yeah. This is a three-year contract, and this was a very interesting uh, bid because two of the bidders that, you know, they bid, they came out as lowest. They were the previous contractors that we had to end their contract due to a number of reasons that I'm not at the liberty to really discuss uh, online. Maybe offline we can, you know, bring you more uh, reasons for them for that. Mm. But 
the uh, the bid we are making recommendations to award to the third uh, lowest bidder, uh, uh, so uh, which is uh, S and J Services for hundred one thousand four hundred twenty four thousand. Uh, part of the reason, in general, without getting into the details, are that you know the some of the insurance requirements that uh, they were supposed to provide, they didn't fully meet those requirements and. Uh, another problem, you know, it's basically with the uh, certificate that they, they needed to provide for their labor that, you know, uh, we had to chase them and, you know, we had a hard time getting those. Uh, and I'm not just going to leave it at that. Okay. So. Yeah. Discussion, yeah. Yes. So, uh, Amid, does that cover, is it uh, basically the cleaning of the offices yes. and the facilities? Right. And is that a like a night, every night kind of thing? Or? Yeah, every day, right, every night, right, after the people leave. We took off part of that, uh, you know, that it's be doing it in house, you know, like the barbers building and dusting in the uh, operations. But the rest of that is basically the general cleaning. Oh, so does it include more than just this building? Uh, yeah, includes yeah this one, this building as well as part of the building in the operations, the alignment area. Okay. It's a daily kind uh, of. It's a daily clean. kind of clean. Can I add to that? Yeah, we took off we took off large areas that just required sweep sweeping because you charge per square foot. So we took that off. Hmm. So it's general uh, office areas now. So who does the large areas? Our facilities. We, we do. We do it ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include the materials too. You guys supply that, or is that all the materials to paper products, cleaning products? Part of that, uh, you know, we provide we provide the pr cleaning stuff, right? The vacuum and everything, you know, they provide. They have their own vacuum, but the cleaning products we have, we have them. We were going to ask Dave and I were going to ask you, but you you probably have janitors at school systems, correct? Yeah, full time. I janitors. used SJ in service SJ service at a previous company. I can share some information offline. Okay. Should we vote on it? <laughs> um, it was nothing, nothing really. Oh, was okay. just some stuff to be like aware of for your day-to-day -day <coughs> operation, communication-wise. Okay. I learned how to use Babelfish at the time or Google <coughs> Translator to make sure that everything got translated properly. So I used to type what I wanted, and once I started doing that, everything happened correctly. Oh, Before man. that, there were some issues with communication because mm -hmm. um, the supervisor that would show up in to different sites spoke English fine, but the people working day to day would say yes, and then what was going to get done didn't get done. Right. And so we just went oh, to I translate see. it online, left that hanging, and then we never had a problem again. Hmm. So okay, that's it's just something to keep in mind as that's far as feedback. how many mm -hmm. people. Great feedback. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So Good. Okay. Thank you. Should we vote? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, general discussion. We have um, some meetings coming up here. So it's Wednesday. Is that May? I'm looking May at that. And the 10th. So May 9th and 10th. Mm -hmm. All right. At 6.30, it's actually coming to everyone. What is that for? Oh, that's the not budget. on this. This is the budget meetings? The well, they're both budget, but the Thursday will be the budget and the regular board meeting as well. May are those in our calendars? Um, Ninth and tenth. Not okay. yet, but they will be tomorrow. So okay. my ninth and tenth. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. <coughs> and that's good for me. I can't do the tenth. Okay. Yep, that's it. You're out. Mm -hmm. I can do the ninth. What about the eighth um, and ninth? I'll have to see. You want to check that? <coughs> yeah. There's nothing else going on. There's something in the calendar for 6.30 on the ninth. For us? The RMLD. Yeah, that's going to be it. Yeah. That's it, yeah. And then Thursday at 7.30. Yeah. So I had something I wanted. Um, okay, if you can't do the, I'll send out emails tomorrow 
Okay. We so right. look forward to those trees. <laughs> <laughs> They're easier to answer than some of the other. Yeah, ones. rather than. And then June 21st yep. and July 19th. <coughs> June 21st. Okay. July 19th. And then um, yep. August is NEPA. That's what, like the last weekend in August, usually? Close to the end of the. Yeah, do we have uh, a date for that? Third or fourth week? Yeah. A lot of information about it. Yeah. But um, as soon as I know more, I'll let you know. It's on, it's on the NEPA website already. Yeah. Who's on the NEPA it's, on the, it's been there since January. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Chris then cab Chris meeting. Yeah. Dave, you got the April 18th cab. That's tomorrow. You're yes. Good. Yes, You're good with I'm that. on top of that. Excellent. And John's got May 16th. Yeah, May 16th. Yep. This says board material available but not discussed. What does uh, that mean? It's just... Some of the stuff that's on your 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 yeah, iPad. On the iPad, the survey comparison, and then yeah, the rate comparison and the the accounts payable questions. Oh, okay. See if you get that file on your iPad. That's <laughs> right. I didn't get to that slide. Yeah. Sorry about that. And all right, good. So I think with that, we can go to executive session. Okay. So do I make? Do I read the motion? No, no. I, you oh, you read the motion. Okay. Move that the board uh, go to exe go in executive session to consider the purchase of real property, and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. Okay, second. All those in favor? Pull aye. the board. Pull the board. Oh, pull the board. Pull the board. Mr. Talbot, aye. Tom O'Rourke, aye. Mr. Hennessy, aye. Mr. Pacino, aye. Mr. Stempak, aye. Yeah. All right. Okay. This meeting has ended. You don't know. You don't bang it at the end. <laughs> you bang it to start. Oh, just to the start. Yeah, that's <laughs>